Next up, I'm going to show you how the GM tube fares with uh, some actual radioactive materials. Now, we're not allowed to store in school uh, some pure radioactive isotopes. We're not allowed any uranium or plutonium, anything like that. But what we are allowed is some radioactive rocks or radioactive minerals. Because like I said, radioactivity is it's a natural phenomenon. Okay? Radioactive isotopes occur naturally in nature all over the place. Now, some parts of the world and some countries, the rocks are slightly more radioactive than normal. Um, these are samples of some of those rocks. Right, keep them in uh, a lead-lined box uh, for safety, because obviously lead is very good at absorbing all three types of radiation, alpha, beta, and gamma. So that keeps them quite nice and safely stored. Okay, now, we've got four samples of rocks from four different parts of the world here. Okay, here's the first one. I'll just show you this. A bit of a close up. Okay, now as you can see there, just looks like a regular piece of rock, but it's a bit green. Okay, now it's not green, it's not green because it's radioactive. Alright, it's green because it's containing some compounds of copper. I, I would imagine uh, copper carbonate would be a good, good guess there. Okay. So that's what that's our first sample we're going to look at. Right. Let's see with the GM shoe on. Okay. As you see there, much, much more impressive, much more impressive than the background radiation. Okay, now, let's have a look at sample number two. Can you look close up there? Okay, again, less impressive to look at here. Just look like regular rocks, but like I said, they've got a high than, um, higher than normal concentration of radioactive isotopes. Okay, less, a lower count rate there than our previous sample. So as you can see, I'm using tongs and, and, uh, and goggles at all times when, when uh, dealing with these radioactive uh, samples, even though they are just radioactive minerals, radioactive rocks, okay? So again, that's another green colored one, which I uh, expect is, is, is containing uh, compounds of copper in there. Okay, let's see how that one fares. Again, fairly impressive. Okay, this is finally. Right, so this one looks like a more of a regular sandstone type of material there. So again, a fairly substantial count rate that's being measured there. Right, now the one I'm going to go for, I'm, I'm going to have a little play with this one here. This, this is the single piece, because I want to take it out of the bag. Because I want to show you now how we, uh, how we determine whether a radioactive source or sample is giving off alpha, beta or gamma. Now I want to take this out of the bag, because at the start of this lesson, hopefully we found out that alpha is stopped is quite easily stopped by a couple of sheets of paper. Now, if it's going to be stopped by a couple of sheets of paper, it's going to be stopped by plastic as well. I'll just leave that there. So, on its own, this sample gives quite a substantial count rate. Okay, let's see what effect, if any, couple of sheets of paper does. No effect. Right. If there's no effect from a couple of sheets of paper, I think we can safely assume there's no alpha, no alpha radiation being given off from this sample of radioactive rock. Okay? 
Right, beta. Do you remember when we start the lesson? The thing that stops or pretty much stops beta all beta particles is a couple of sheets of a few sheets of aluminium. So let's see what effect this has. Hear it from the, the loudspeaker uh, uh, better there, but there's some effect. Didn't uh, totally cut it out at all, but putting the aluminium in front definitely had some effect there. So it's safe to assume that there's some beta particles, some beta radiation being given off. Now, what's the thing that stops gamma? Right, well, hopefully you found out that it's actually a couple of centimetres of lead that really does the trick there. So let's see how the lead performs. Nothing. Okay, so there you have it. This piece of radioactive rock, pretty sure that that's giving off a small amount of beta radiation and quite a lot of gamma. Okay? And we determine that by using different absorbers between the GM tube and the sample. Okay, thank you very much.